popular with day trippers now had celebrity status. A boom for Falk, his electric railway. And now, exposed by the tide, is what I've come to see. Ian Gledhill has written a history of Volk's eccentric railway. Ian, this is <laughs> completely mad! It is unbelievable, isn't it, that there should be a railway along the beach like this? The track ran on these concrete blocks. This is one set of tracks, and there was another set a little further over. Oh, hang on. <laughs> can see its line running all the way along right. here. Four rails, there were two rails on here and two rails over there, 18 feet between the two. I think the widest track gauge of any railway ever built. It stretched for three miles towards Brighton. The track was underwater at high tide, so what sort of train could run on it? This is a model made by Magnus Holt in 1893. The final one looked somewhat different from that, but that was his first idea of it. Isn't that wonderful? It must have been an extraordinary sight. Well, it was absolutely enormous. It stood on legs 24 feet high. The deck was 50 feet long. On the top there was a cabin that could carry sort of 30 passengers in comfort with stained glass windows, chandeliers. I mean, can I just ask the simple question? Yes. It operated by electricity. Yes. It's going underwater. <laughs> How did it work? Well, it was an overhead wire mounted on posts alongside the track, and current came through the motor, and then the return was through the rails. So that meant at high tide it was through the sea itself. But there wasn't a health and safety executive in those days. I don't know what they'd have said about it if he proposed it now. And this is the only footage of Volk's creation, a daddy long legs, as it came to be known. 